Hello and welcome to episode 7 and hopefully the final episode of the intro to Linux. So if you're here, you're here for one of two reasons. Either one, you're a fan of my videos and you just want to be here to support me, in which case, thank you, I love you. Or two, you've installed Linux on your computer in some way and you want to remove it and go back to Windows, in which case, I've got to say why. I know it's entirely your decision and I don't want to stop you from it. Before you go jumping in and going straight back to Windows, let's see what the problems you're having are and see if we can fix them. In a lot of people's cases, they want to go back to Windows because something that they have doesn't work. Be it a piece of software that they've purchased, a piece of hardware that they've purchased, anything like that. And in response to that, I'll say, have you checked online to see if it works yet or not? I've met a lot of people who've tried Linux and said, but my printer doesn't work, so I'm going to have to go back to Windows. Or my scanner doesn't work, or my webcam doesn't work, or whatever. Now the thing to keep in mind about that is, it is rarely Linux's fault when something doesn't work like that. Nine times out of ten, either the hardware manufacturer didn't provide a driver that works in Linux, or the software that you have to have doesn't have an equivalent in Linux, or it just plain doesn't work if you want to run it in Wine or something. Now if you are having that kind of problem where you're not able to run a piece of software within Linux, or you haven't found an alternative, you might go back and check out episode number six, there'll be a link here in the sidebar. In it, it tells you how to run your software within Linux by running Windows inside of Linux or by running it inside of Wine. Now if your hardware is actually a problem and it's not supported, there are two schools of thought there. You can either one, go back to Windows and just deal with all the problems that you have there, or two, you can buy new hardware. Now there are a lot of people that are going to say, I just purchased this piece of hardware or I've had it for a very long time, I don't want to get a new piece of hardware. If that's the case and you have to go back to Windows over it, more power to you. I will be providing the information on how to take you back to Windows here shortly. I just wanted to make sure that all the problems are addressed before you do so. The other problem that I've heard pretty commonly is I just don't like the way it looks. I just don't like the way it feels. I just don't like the software that comes bundled with it. Well, if you go back and check out episode 5 of this series, you'll be able to find some alternative software that should be helpful to you. If you haven't seen that already, give that a look, please. And quite frankly, if it's the look and feel that you don't like, there are tons of other options that you can try. If you're using the default Ubuntu install, there's actually Kubuntu, which puts a different look and feel over it. I'll actually put a screenshot up here. There's Xubuntu, which comes with the XFCE interface. There's Lubuntu or Lubuntu. It's got the LXDE interface. What I'm saying here is you've got a ton of options as far as look and feel. You don't have to be stuck to one. I mean, if you're so inclined, there are even ways to make whatever you've got look like Windows. At this point, I honestly can't think of anything else that would make you want to go back to Windows, but just in case you still do, let's go ahead and go over how you would do it. Now, if you've been following the series, you've probably got a copy of Windows somewhere, so you're going to have to have that to actually go back. As you'll see, I've got my copies here, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out Windows XP. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can go back to Windows from here. You can either, one, do a full reinstall which is gonna make you wipe out all of your data, you're gonna lose everything. I'm not gonna recommend that unless you're very comfortable doing things like this. You've gotta back up all of your data first just to make sure you don't lose it. And the second way is actually to restore the boot record onto your Windows XP system. This should work sorta of similarly with Windows 7 and Windows Vista, but I don't actually have a Windows 7 or Vista system to test it with. I might go back later and do a rehash of this just to go over that. All right, so at this point, this is probably what your machine is gonna look like. You've got your Ubuntu Linux to, you can boot up to, a memory test, and Windows XP. If you do have Windows 7 or Vista on here, I'm not gonna be much help to you, but I can definitely try. I've got a copy of Vista here that I can load up, but for the time being, let's go ahead and just focus on XP. So what I'm gonna do is select devices and select my DVD burner where I've actually got my Windows CD. If you're doing this on physical hardware, you just go ahead and stick your CD in the drive and tell it to boot from that CD. I will go ahead and reboot this machine now that it's got that in there and you'll see it is actually going to boot from the CD. And see, this is the traditional Windows setup. However, we're gonna do something just a little bit different. So traditionally, you'd hit enter here to go ahead and set up your Windows XP. Well, instead, we're going to go to a recovery console. So you hit the R key. It's gonna ask me which Windows install I wanna select. There's only one, so I'm gonna hit the number one and hit enter. It's gonna ask for the administrator password. As you'll see there, I wasn't sure what the password was. Turns out it was blank. So I am in here at the C prompt. What I will type is fix MBR. What that does is it checks the master boot record on the hard drive just to see if you've still got the Windows 1 installed. It tells you here this may damage your partition, this is going to make all your stuff inaccessible, it could. You sure you want to write it? Yes. So there you go, a new master boot record has been successfully written. So, so what you really have to do now is just hit exit and it will restart the system for you. And when it comes up, it's going to ask you to boot from the CD again, but once it passes the CD, there you go, that's your Windows XP. Ubuntu is officially gone. Now if you go into your My Computer Manage and go into your Disk Management, you'll notice that I still have an extra 14 gigs and a 680 some megabyte partition that are unaccessible. Now there are a couple of ways you can do this. The, the easiest way of course is just to right click on that and delete it. You can also boot back up with your Ubuntu CD and use the partition editor in there to extend your C drive. I'm just going to go ahead and delete the logical drive. 
was not created by Windows and you're going to lose data. If you had anything on your Ubuntu partition, make sure to get it off before you do any of this, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that partition. I'm going to delete this other one because it's a swap drive and there's nothing on it. I'm going to delete this partition because it's just completely empty at this point. And now I have an unallocated partition, but I did get the rest of my space back. So if I right click on that and go to new partition, you'll see the welcome to new partition manager. Hit next, primary partition, uh, take the full size of it, I don't care, give it a drive letter, give it a new volume with a quick format, and finish. And there you go, it is creating that E drive for me. Now the alternative to doing this, like I said, is to boot up with your Ubuntu CD and actually manually delete these partitions that were here and resize your C drive to fill it all back up. This is a very quick alternative that will get you back up into Windows and remove Ubuntu from your system 100%. So if I go into my computer now, you'll see that I have a C drive and an E drive. The E drive is completely empty. You can use it as you would use anything on your C drive. In fact, a lot of people do like having that separate drive. So this may have come out in the better for you if you have to go back to Windows. Well, that's about it. You should be back on Windows now if you really want to be. Just remember that Linux will always be there. If you want to come back and try it again, you're more than welcome to. It's always going to be free. And you can start this video series over again from the beginning if you want to give it another try. I would really appreciate it. But that's all for now. That's all for the intro to Linux. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week with a brand new intro to series. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.